This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by our friends at Bombfell. Go to bombfell.com forward slash rogue and get $25 off your first order. Yeah, R-O-G-U-E. There's an OG in Rogue. Did you donate plasma? Dude, a lot. I donate a lot of plasma. Let me tell you about the last time I donated plasma. I'm laying there and the needle rolled out of my vein. So they pull the blood out, they cycle out the plasma, they pump the blood back in, but the needle rolled out when they were pumping it back in and my arm just started swelling up. It was incredibly painful. <laughs> And you got paid for this? I got paid a little bit, so, yeah. So, uh, you, you do know that in America, if you're paid for any bodily fluid that you give, it's most certainly not being used for medicine. Somebody somewhere is wearing a cosmetic that has bits of Jason Murphy in it. God, that makes me so happy. <laughs> Smear my essence all over your face. It will make you beautiful. <laughs> Let's so, do it right I'm now. I'm so sad I empowered you. <laughs> I'm going to make you so pretty. I'm going to make you so beautiful, no, Brian. No. Real blood versus fake blood. Last episode we talked about chocolate syrup and why it works so well in black and white movies is fake blood. Now we're in full color. Look at us. You're welcome. We're in full color. So back in the 19th century, they started making fake blood for stage plays in Paris. And they called them the Grand Guignol. They were opulent horror stage plays with lots of spraying blood and everything. Before that, a lot of times they just used red kerchief to indicate that someone was bleeding. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, like a, sort of like a kabuki player or something where it's just right. like, they're like, ah, yeah. out, out the blood comes. Exactly, but in the Grand Guignol, they started making all of this fake blood and uh, it became more important in the 1930s when we started to see the advent of color film. Did color film start in the 1930s? Absolutely, yeah, you started to see stuff like Gone with the Wind and Wizard of Oz shot in beautiful Technicolor. With all the blood that With we all remember the blood. fondly. Right, well, they had the Hayes Code, which limited the amount of violence and blood and nudity that you could show on screen. But uh, you had, in 1957, The Curse of Frankenstein from Hammer Films, one of my favorite movies. And they were not beholden to the Hayes Code because they were in Great Britain. Color or black and white? That was color. Okay, right That on. was color. And they started using uh, uh, fake blood for that. But that fake blood looked silly, and so people just started revising it. It, just, it was a recipe, like anything else. And then, in the 70s, Pioneer Dick Smith, uh, the guy who did the special effects for Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, and The Exorcist, he came up with his own recipe that was the staple for a very long time. Unfortunately, it was very, very poisonous because it had photodeveloping chemicals in it. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's bad. Yeah. Okay, so the big thing that we learned in the black and white version of this is that chocolate syrup worked very well because it sort of the viscosity flash froze what appeared to be the motion of dripping and allowed you to get multiple shots from multiple angles. It was very easy easy to work with so that you could have something splash on somebody and preserve that moment of what we all associate with blood splatter, right? Exactly, exactly. And really what you want to consider is for movies, a lot of times you don't need just one type of blood. It varies from movie to movie and sometimes from scene to scene because maybe you want an arterial spray or a vein spray. Like in a samurai movie, somebody slashes a throat and it just, you know, shoots yeah. out like a fountain. Yeah. That's, that's one type of blood. Mm -hmm. Separate, uh, you get something like, a, I don't know, like Kill Bill where he's throwing basically strawberry jam on everybody. Well, that was actually considered like samurai blood, but then you see like the Italian giallo films like Mario Bava or something like that, where the blood is really like almost magenta and pink and thick. And then other times you see it where it's more brown or realistic. It really depends on what type of movie, what type of scene, what emotion you want to elicit. So specifically, I want to explore the territory between what looks good in person versus what looks good on screen. For example, I've done a lot of magic shows with a lot of fake blood in a lot of different places. Everyone's got their own system. When I did a thing in Istanbul, for whatever it is, I don't know if it was the set, I don't know if it was the way everything was arranged, I don't know if it was the way I did the fake blood, it looked super cartoonish, like purpley, like, like unbelievable, right? Mm -hmm. Separately, the best fake blood I ever did was on Penn & Teller's Fool Us, and to be honest, I leaned almost entirely just on red food coloring. Really? Like n almost nothing else. And the downside, of course, was that my hands were bright red for days. And then meanwhile, you get into weird legal territory where, for example, when I did my show in Indonesia, it is literally against the law to have realistic fake blood on screen. So we came up with a compromise, basically. We just decided the blood was gonna be green and we would never acknowledge why it was green. <laughs> so you've, you've done this many, many times. Sure. I could tell you what I think looks best in real life, which is not what looks best on screen and almost certainly does not look like real blood. A lot of times, uh, blood is just filmed and then it's color corrected to make it look like uh, the needs of the scene these days. Or sometimes there's 
not even any blood at all, and it's added uh, in post, like Digitally, in the Expendables. Or the freaking Walking Dead, where everything's digital blood. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the digital blood. We'll but see. show me your recipe, and uh, try to make it as real as possible. Okay, so uh, first of all, there, there's a few different brands. And I'll show you mine. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. I'm really glad I dulled this. <laughs> oh, I checked. I checked. So for live stage blood, it depends on what the effect is you want to do. The first thing you want to decide is whether or not you are trying to make it look like real blood in the moment, or if you want to be able to preserve it so that people can get a shot or an iconic image of what right. looks like blood splattered over your face. Mm -hmm. That's a question of viscosity. Everybody uses corn syrup. Caro is the most popular brand. This is like an off brand right here, but you can see, I mean, it's, it's uh, viscous. It's, it's a lot like the chocolate syrup that we did, mm -hmm. only it's totally clear. Now, traditionally, you'll mix this with straight up red food coloring. And if you're doing stuff, whoops, uh, well, now I'm filthy. This. <laughs> so this is nothing but pure red food coloring. By the way, food coloring does wash out pretty well uh, in, uh, you know, just using regular detergent. To you and me, it looks like candy. It looks cartoonish, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna suspect that on screen, this looks pretty good. So what I will often do, if I'm doing a show in real life, real blood almost has sort of a, like a coppery, sort of, sort of brown tint to yeah. it. So what I'll usually do is I'll do an entire, uh, I don't know, uh, container of red, and then I'll add two or three drops of green in there, and that'll give it a little bit of that coppery brown look to it. So now, instead of this cartoony red right here, I'm gonna mix this around, and now you can see that we yeah. get we get sort of a little bit of a brown, like a like a darker blood because of course blood that is oxygenated exactly. is, is redder than yeah. than uh, depleted blood. And you want to consider uh, how you want it to look as it dries, if that's even a part of your scene or whatever you're shooting. Blood actually does dry into a b dark brownish color. That's one of the other nice things about using Caro syrup is that when it dries, it maintains that gloss on there. It'll actually dry and still have that shine as if it's still wet and lively. So as a result, if you're doing a costume, then uh, uh, you want it primarily almost no water. You want it pretty much just caro syrup and whatever coloring you want. And you want to flick it on you and then as it dries, it'll stay shiny as if it's live blood that just now splashed on your face. When they were shooting the original Evil Dead, Bruce Campbell said that they used the corn syrup method and that he had so much of it dried on his shirt that his shirt broke. What? Like, yeah. like cracked in half? <laughs> yes. I totally believe that. Okay, now uh, what's the story with this? With This This is just flour, uh, one of the many methods that you can use to add texture to it. The blood that we used in the episode with the bloodstain uh, pattern analysis yeah. actually had cocoa powder in it. That added a different color and a little bit of a better texture. Throw some of that in there. Let's see what that yeah. looks like. So right now we've got a bit of green and a, and a whole lot of red. Mm -hmm. How much you want to put in? Well, I, yeah, see, I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, keep, I, keep, I, keep, keep, keep it coming. For the way I use fake blood, I want it to flow nicely. So as a result, uh, this viscosity, while it's a benefit for cinematography, it's not a benefit for live stage show. Actually, that's pretty good. That looks really good, right? Nice, right? Yeah. I don't know how this looks on video, but I'm gonna say that live and in person, this is a pretty good viscous, gelatinous zombie compound. I'm gonna say that when I did Penn and Teller Fool Us, I almost went entirely with red food coloring. In fact, this is the actual bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and this is pure Adam's extract food coloring. Okay, that looks pretty good, right? Oh, that looks great, yeah. The bummer is this will legit stain your hands for days and days and yeah. days, but if you don't care, then that's fine. OxyClean cleans all of this stuff up really, really oh, well. okay. So I'm gonna guess this one looks good in real life. It's so thick. Super viscous. This one, I'm gonna say, will very much look good on camera. Okay. Which means there's only one third variety. You wanna compare it to the real thing? I just wanna know how the phone call went when you got actual pints of pig's blood. Uh, the lady at the daycare center was just really nonchalant about it. I, I don't know how to feel about any of this. It's thicker than I thought. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Maximum science. <laughs> Everything I've read has indicated that actual blood is fairly disappointing in the reality. Okay. Okay. <sighs> oh God. Oh God. Jesus Christ, this oh is Oh my God. I'm suddenly regretting this decision, Brian. <laughs> I'm suddenly regretting this decision. I'm sorry. Um, Me too. For the internet. Yeah. 
There's always room for Jello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all coagulated pipes blood. I didn't expect that. I didn't either. This looks brown, brown, brown. Oh yeah. It does not look oh, like yeah. real blood. It, it looks like oh. you splashed oh, soda on me. So this is real blood. That's real uh, pig's blood, according to the woman at uh, Blue Bear Daycare Center. Yeah. J just a little bit of water. Ugh. Hey, good call on the flip flops. Oh, there we go. Okay. Man, this is fresh. This is from this morning. Really? Yeah. Okay. The, the pigs came in this morning is what they were telling me. I, oh God. Man, right, our just, job is awesome. Just, just as is? Yeah. 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 Okay, I, I, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let you have it. We'll try to keep it to the right side so we have a comparison. This is, <laughs> I'm ready. Real blood, take one. Oh. Oh, there it is. That's real blood. That's real blood. It's soaking through, by the way. Oh. It's on my jeans. Oh. Oh my God, my wife is gonna be so pissed. What is this? Um, uh, so there's always room for jello. It's brownish. I mean, I'm gonna say that 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 the coagulated bits look look super duper realistic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not the best. All right. Now we're gonna do real life believable blood. This is what we thought with a little bit of uh, green. Okay, ready. Three, two. Whew. Okay. Oh, See, that this looks is, awesome. This is very close. Yeah. To that, to that, ch to that chocolate. I would say in real life it looks pretty good, but it looks too dark. I'm gonna bet on camera that doesn't look nearly as good. It looks way better than the real stuff. Yeah, the real stuff is pretty gross. Now this is the more watery one. So we have actual blood on the right. Real life looking pretty good blood. Now, my guess is this will look cartoonish in real life, but will be pretty red on screen. Ready and... Oh! <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> oh God, mother, blood, blood. Okay. Uh, that one is my favorite. Oh, thicker one? The the viscous one. You think the viscosity really matters as far as being a, because I'll tell you what, this, because it's so liquid, immediately just absorbs and, yeah. and becomes just general red. It soaks in right away. I'm really curious to how, what these are gonna look like once they dry. Look at the, the shades of the real, real one. Real blood how, looks awful. How brown Speaking it is. Speaking of yeah. which, let's throw more, let's just put more real blood on you. Let's do it. Let's just, just, let's just, <laughs> Oh, God damn. Get it in there, man. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be so gelatinous, oh. but I guess that's what happens. That's what blood does. Oh, oh. I think you got some on you. Real blood, not good, too brown, and also too chunky. Yeah. Uh, live stage blood, the viscosity really matters. Like, look at that. Here, look at this. Yeah, give me some of that. There you go. Look at this, here we go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it does look pretty good. It's all straight up red food coloring in the caro. Ah. Ah. I feel like this is your life's ambition. You finally have realized a dream. I, what have I done? What have I become a part of? I'm gonna go introduce myself to the neighbors. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> oh my God. Jason, you know what time of the month it is? Man, it's like Christmas. It's time for Bombfell. Mm. You get assigned an actual yeah. stylist who gets what you're about. You describe brands that you would never ever be caught dead wearing, your body type, the size you are, and then somebody puts yeah. together basically the stuff you would buy for yourself. Yeah, <gasps> what you got? First of all, I already got a t-shirt. That is perfect. All right, there you go. Nice. Right? Okay. Right? Digging right. it, into it. What uh, you got for your bottom parts? <laughs> That's what they call them. <laughs> I got sweet, sweet khakis. All right, look, I'm gonna put these on. You open right. up yours. All right. Uh, BRB, Do BRB. It. Oh, I got this slick t-shirt. Wait, is it the same t-shirt? It is not. It's better. That is better. Isn't it? You got this long sleeve button up. This looks kind of rugged. And I got some tough looking jeans. 
I'm gonna look slick. Hey, where can people go to uh, get on the Bombfell train? Bombfell.com forward slash rogue. You get $25 off your first purchase. Oh, hello. Man, they are on point. I'm gonna look like a guy who carries a pocket knife and knows how to change a tire. Not only do you get your own personal stylist who gets what you're all about, but the more of the stuff you keep, the bigger the discounts you get. It's so simple, and the more you use it, the better your style gets, because you start building a relationship with your stylist. You can even edit your orders in advance. Hells yeah, dude, they send you in advance. They're like, this is what we're gonna send you. And you're like, I got a problem with it. You're like, I don't know, let me give it a try. I wanna know how Bombfell has figured out that all of their outfits need to look great with my flip-flops. They always look great with the flip-flops. It actually works. Bombfell.com slash rogue. Three, two, one. Got it? Not yet. Uh, nothing's coming out. Do we not know how to hose?